crispy suited man with a briefcase named Tomoyuki enters his house and shares with us that his wife is a demon. He's not talking bad about her or anything. She's literally a demon with horns and everything. He steps inside and Miss Demon Bride. Mitsuki is waiting for him with an angry face and a knife in her hand. She yells at him for coming home this late, because it's already 1M. Tomoyuki adds that she's really scary when she gets angry and shows the precise image of a wrathful demon. What makes her anger more dangerous is the height difference of 30 centimeters between them. Tomoyuki tries to calm her down, saying that she should put the knife away while Mitsuki is still holding his collar and advising him to always contact her if he is going to be late. If he takes her lightly, Mitsuki clarifies that she's going to eat him. Turns out, Tomoyuki Mitsuki was dragged out by his seniors for a drink, so Mitsuki asks if he has already eaten as well. Tomoyuki responds that he has and that she should stop spinning the knife because he's getting scared. Mitsuki throws a towel at his face and tells him to go take a bath as he is stinking of alcohol. She angrily walks back to the dining table where she prepared a very tasty meal for her husband. Mitsuki's eyes fill with tears over how she worked so hard to make all this for him and was so happy to see him back home, yet she could couldn't be honest with him and ended up lashing out at him. She's now sulking while being worried that her love love hubby will hate her now for always getting mad at him. Just then, Tomo wraps his arms around her from behind and tells her that he could never ever hate her because he loves her a lot. Mitsuki's heartbeat is getting really fast and while she blushes, she thinks of telling him that she really loves him too. However, she ends up saying to him that he cannot fool her with this sweet talk. Tomo smiles at her cute wife still pretending to act tough and not saying what she really feels. He starts rubbing Mitsuki's sensitive horns and she ends up confessing that she really loves him. They both finish the delicious meal and head to bed. Mitsuki texts Tomo, asking if he's gonna be late again today, but he replies that he might be able to leave early today. Mitsuki gets really happy and grins over how her favorite person is coming home early today. She wonders if Tomo remembers what today is because this is the date when they met for the first time. Tomo politely approached Mitsu to ask her if she would be his friend while Mitsuki was roaring and telling him to run away unless he wanted to get eaten. She remembers how they used to play a lot together when they were kids and they would pick the chestnuts that she really likes. Back then, Tomo used to be so tall and cool. Now, he's still cool but not so tall anymore. She rolls up her sleeves as she gets ready to make his favorite dish. Sometime later, she gets a message from Tomo saying that some urgent work came up and he might be late again. He apologizes to her, saying that he will try to finish it as soon as possible. Tomo finally arrives home and hears someone running towards him with heavy steps. His demon wife is extremely angry at him and this time, she has a cleaver in her hand. She has decided to really devour him this time as she won't accept any more apologies. Tomo tells her that he's really sorry and Mitsuki notices that Tomo is panting and sweating all over as if he ran all the way here. She asks him, what's the matter? And Tomo looks up at her with a blushing face and tells her that, since today is the precious anniversary of their first meeting, he went looking for the chestnut desert that she likes from back home. Mitsuki's eyes fill with tears of joy and her face turns red. She is really happy that Tomo remembered the date, so she turns around to wipe her tears while pretending that she isn't crying because she is a demon. Mitsuki is digging into her favorite desert brought to her by her favorite person while Tomo is just smiling and staring at her wife's beautiful smile. He is happy that his effort was worth it. Just then, Mitsuki looks up and notices Tomo staring at her. She turns around to shield her dessert, saying that this is all hers and she isn't going to share it. Tomo smiles and tells her that she should eat it all and for him. Seeing her so delighted is more than he could ask for. Mitsuki's face turns all red again over how sweet her hubby is, and she feels shameful for acting selfish in return. She then musters all the courage she could, and while blushing, she extends her spoon to give Tamo a bite and tells him to say aye. It's Sunday morning and Mitsuki tries to wake Tamo, but Tamo mumbles to her that he only needs five more minutes. Mitsuki reminds him that he already said that earlier, so Tomo asks for an hour more instead of five minutes. Mitsuki gets angry and tells him to wake up as it's already 10 o'clock. She has a frying pan and a large spoon in her hand, too. Mitsuki tells Tomo that just because it's Sunday, it does not mean that he can laze around in bed all day. Tomo mumbles that she's just like a mother, but thankfully, 
Mitsuki didn't hear it and Tomo survives. She starts banging the pan and spoon until Tomo gets out of bed. The plan works and Tomo is now fully awake. She prepares the breakfast for him and while he's digging in, she asks if he would like some apple juice. Who wouldn't? So Tomo gladly accepts the offer. Mitsuki starts squeezing the apple in her fist and extracts the juice into a glass, just like that. Tomo is really amazed at a demon's strength, while Mitsuki is proud of preparing freshly squeezed apple juice for her husband. Juicer Stonks took a real hit after this. Tomo is done with the breakfast, so he starts picking up the plates, but Mitsuki tells him to leave it there and she will take care of them. However, Tomo tells her that he will wash them and she should just sit back and relax today. Mitsuki sits down and starts smiling and thinking about how considerate her husband is. Tomo is down with the dishes, so he grabs Mitsuki's shoulders from behind and thanks her for always taking care of the chores. She blushes and tells him that he's always working late and she has nothing to do other than get good at household chores. What she actually wanted to say is that she is also thankful to him for always working long and hard. Tomo notices that her shoulders are stiff, so he starts massaging them while Mitsuki enjoys the premium and tickly massage filled with love. So Tomo's wife is a demon who gets mad at him whenever he comes home late. She scolds him and accuses him of loving his work more and that he should have married his work. She is bigger and stronger than him, so he gets really scared when Mitsuki is mad at him. Her threats of tearing him into pieces make it even scarier. She enjoys waking him in the morning by clanging the utensils and everything whenever he is about to head off to work. She sulks at this long separation and gets sad over how he has to go to work every day while she's stuck at home. If Mitsuki likes something, she hogs it to herself like the fried chicken that Tomo isn't getting any of it. Even if Tomo tries to protest and snatch, she makes fun of him by overpowering him and calling him a midget. Whenever he's late, she always stays up and waits for him to come back. She gets really happy when he's back, but she's totally not honest about her feelings, and instead of speaking her heart, she ends up lashing out while pretending that she wasn't worried for him and that she doesn't care. Shimo adores her wife's delicious cooking, and whenever he praises her, she tries to hide her blushing red face. Tomo loves everything about this demon bride of him. So he tells her that he loves her and requests her to always stay by his side. Mitsuki gets overwhelmed at her husband's surprise riz tech. Even though she wants to say the same to him, she ends up smashing a pillow in his face, saying that he shouldn't go spouting such embarrassing stuff. Mitsuki has her eyes closed with a pocky in her mouth, and while her heart is beating fast, she wonders what's with this embarrassing pocky game. Just then, she's surprised by a sudden kiss on her cheek by Tomo, and now she's gone crazy. Her whole face turns red, and she yells at her hubby for surprising her like that while thinking about how this Pocky game is the best game ever. Tomo's shoulders are a bit stiff, and he's trying to massage them with his hand. Mitsuki notices and asks what's the matter. Tomo shares that there has been a lot of work on the computer lately, so sitting in front of the desk for a long time has made his shoulders stiff. Mitsuki sees an opportunity. Mitsuki seizes the opportunity. She cracks her fingers with a grin on her face and tells him that she will take care of his shoulder pain. Before she could even complete the sentence, Tomo turns down the offer and Mitsuki gets angry at him for cutting her off and refusing her kind gesture. She asks why he doesn't like her massage, so Tomo ends up giving in to her request. Tomo is still nervous while Mitsuki promises that all the pain will disappear from his shoulders once she's done with them. Tomo nervously asks if his shoulders will still be in one piece after the massage. He knows how powerful demons are, so it's only fair that he's worried. Mitsuki doesn't like the question and squeezes him. She begins the massage and Tomo is actually feeling really better. He tells Mitsuki that her cooking is delicious and she's gentle and she's cute. So she is a really perfect wife and he's lucky to be married to her. Tomo ends up praising her at the wrong time because Mitsuki has become nervous now over how highly her hubby thinks of her. So she ends up putting a little too much force into his fingers, this time while telling him that he shouldn't say such embarrassing stuff. A cracking sound resonates around the neighborhood. Rest in peace, Tomo's shoulder. Mitsuki is all excited because they are having grilled meat for dinner tonight after so long. She gets up to bring some vegetables as well, and while putting more meat in her plate, she ends up touching the hot pan with her hand and burning her fingers. 
Tamu gets worried and asks her if she's all right, and Mitsuki assures him that it's nothing to worry about. She puts her finger in her mouth and tells him that they will heal automatically. However, Tomo is not risking it, so he tells her that they are going to take proper care of it. Tomo brings out the first aid kit and applies a bandage on Mitsuki's fingers. Mitsuki is not happy because she can't use chopsticks now and she really wants to eat meat. Tomo finds a solution to this problem as well. He picks up a piece with his chopsticks and extends it towards Mitsuki, telling her to say Aya. Mitsuki is again blushing and she tells Tomo to stop making her nervous all the time, but Tomo tells her to obey Dr. Sensi's orders. She shyly averts her eyes and eats the food fed to her by Tomo. On the exterior, she is acting all tough, but inside, she's melting with happiness. Tomo is back home and he's holding a bag in his hand. Mitsuki asks what's in it and Tomo reveals that it's a souvenir from one of his co-workers. Mitsuki starts coughing as she recognizes the smell and asks Tomo if it's peaches in that bag. Tomo takes one out and says that they are. He wonders if Mitsuki hates peaches, so Mitsuki reveals that she cannot eat peaches for religious reasons and that Tomo should them by himself. She hands Tomo Momotaro for reference so he knows what she's talking about. Momotaro is basically an old Japanese folklore that there was a demon baby inside a huge peach. It's already December and Mitsuki is shivering from cold. Just then, she gets an idea. She remembers that Tomo told her he had a kotatsu, so she starts looking for it in the back of the closet. The closet is filled with mess, so Mitsuki is having real trouble digging through all this stuff. She's even calling out Kotatsu-sen to let her know where he is. Just then, a bag falls on her and one after another. Poor Kawaii Mitsuki is buried under all the bags. She shows these mischievous bags who the real boss is here by getting out of them easily and then sitting over them like a madame. She thinks about giving up on this kotatsu idea, but then she thinks about getting under kotatsu with Tomo. Her imagination goes wild. As she imagines both of them sitting in kotatsu-san while holding each other's hands, She's even imagining about squeezing as close to her hubby as possible. Her imagination is now taking things to a different level as she could already hear smooch sounds in her head. Her brain circuit fuses as she is now completely lost in thoughts. Coming back to her senses, she has now this huge sense of motivation to dig out the Katatsu-san, no matter where it is, so she starts tossing stuff here and there until Katatsu-san reveals itself. She finally found it and set it in the living room. Tomo comes home and gets greeted Merry Christmas by the most beautiful Santa he could imagine. It's Mitsuki dressed up as Santa Kun. Demon Santa San is here for Tomo and he's really happy to see her and compliments how good she looks in this outfit. He then asks what kind of Christmas presents did Miss Demon Santa San bring? Mitsuki gets confused and asks what the Christmas presents are because she doesn't know much about the Western stuff. Tomo turns black at realizing that Mitsuki dressed up as Santa without knowing what it means. He then explains to her everything about Christmas and upon realizing that Santa brings gifts, Mitsuki thinks about it and with an innocent and cute face, she turns to Tomo and tells her that this time, she will be the present for him if that's okay. Tomo's heart skips a beat at hearing that Mitsuki is going to be her present and how innocently she said it to him. The couple then celebrates Christmas all night long, and we can guess what they did. It's the New Year's Day now, and Tomo is waiting outside the shrine in front of a huge crowd. Seeing these many people around, he realizes that finding Mitsuki is going to be really hard. He remembers when he told Mitsuki back home that they would meet each other at the shrine at 1 p.m. when she said to him that she's going home to get her favorite kimono for today. Tomo regrets picking a really bad meeting spot. Just then, he hears Mitsuki's voice as she has already found him. He turns his face and goes silent for a few seconds, overseeing how pretty his wife looks in this beautiful kimono. He nervously tries to find words to explain what he's feeling, and while stuttering, he tells her that. She looks incredibly pretty right now. Now Mitsuki is also stunned, and Tomo knows she gets weird every time he praises her with his heart. So she grabs his cheeks and tells him that it's too early in the year to be blurting out such embarrassing stuff. Even though it made her super happy, Tomo asks why she's holding the Hagwata. So Mitsuki responds that she bought it just now so they could play Hanetsuki after this. She's excited to see Tomo's face covered in ink when she's done while Tomo claims that he's going to turn the tables on her. Mistuki has been in a bad mood since losing her temper last night over Tomo coming home late again. 
Tumo nervously tells her that he is leaving and Mitsuki harshly turns around saying okay. As Tomo leaves, Mitsuki notices a piece of paper on their dining table. She picks up the page and it's a letter from Tomo thanking her for everything and apologizing for coming home late. Despite knowing how she feels lonely when he is not with her, he tells her that he loves her and Mitsuki is all cheered up now over this wholesome apology. With a blushing face, she gives this love-slash-apology letter a kiss. It's a holiday for Tomo yet. He's busy tapping his laptop. Mitsuki asks him what he's doing and Tomo answers that it's just some work that he has to get done before tomorrow. Mitsuki gets triggered and starts scolding him. She asks him just how much he is in love with his work and if he's some kind of workaholic or something. Tomo gets nervous and replies that his boss gave him some materials to organize, and Mitsuki realizes that the real villain here is Tomo's boss. He rarely gets a day off, and his boss has still dumped work on him. She asks him if he's even getting paid for this extra work, and if working late every day wasn't enough. Now that his boss is even trying to make him work on holidays, she tries to make him realize that he has to stand up for himself. Just then, she slams her fist on her hand because she finally understands what needs to be done. She brings out her spiky bat and decides to go see his boss and have a talk. Amo tries to calm her down and promises to finish up as soon as possible. He begins tapping faster so he can spend time with his waifu. Sometime later, Mitsuki pops up from his left, asking if he's done, but Tomo responds that he still has some left. A few minutes later, Mitsuki pops up from his right and asks if he's done now and Tomo is now getting nervous. He tells her that he's almost done. A few minutes later, Mitsuki pops up from under Tomo's desk, asking if he's done yet or not. Seeing his wife's cute impatience like a baby, he pulls her cheek saying that he still needs some more time. After getting her cheeks pulled, she walks away saying that she is going to take a nap now and she hopes he will be done by the time she wakes up. After going into the other room, she rubs her cheek with a grin on her face. She enjoyed it a lot and intends to hog more of his attention once he's done since Mitsuki cat mode is on now. It's February 3rd now, and Mitsuki knows that Setsubun is set to premiere today. She sits down in front of the TV with her snacks and keeps crunching on them with anger because she finds this event annoying. In the TV, the children are throwing beans at the demons to get luck, and Mitsuki is seriously angry at everyone ganging up on demons, like a bunch of bullies. What irritates her more is the fact that these beans cannot even scratch demons, let alone scare them. They could still easily devour all of them, but due to religious reasons, they refrain from doing so. Tomo is back home, and he has brought some beans along with him since it's Setsubun today. Mitsuki reminds him that he's showing the beans to a demon. Tomo grins or opens up the bean pack. He then grabs some in his fist and gets ready to throw them at Mitsuki while she tears up because she never expected Tomo to be making fun of her like this. As Tomo throws the beans at her instead of yelling demons out luck in, he yells demons and luck in. Now Mitsuki is feeling honored instead of being mocked. Tomo tells her that the reason for throwing beans on Setsubun was to drive away demons that bring disaster. However, there are no bad demons in their home. Instead, they only have a demon bride who brings him loads of happiness. Mitsuki gets emotional over how pure her husband's feelings are. So she decides to play along with his game and picks up the beans to celebrate Setsuburn. However, with the power she's throwing the beans at Tomo, he already regrets bringing the beans home. Tomo is again working on his day off because he's a quintessential wage slave. Mitsuki is staring at him from behind the wall and is seeking some attention. She is on the verge of crying and wants her precious Tomo to finish the work already because she can't handle the loneliness anymore. She wants attention, not just attention, only his attention. However, she knows that she can't bother him while working. Otherwise, it would only make things harder for him. Just then, she gets an idea. She picks up a disinfectant spray and a cloth so she can pretend that she's cleaning, but actually, she will just be staying close to Tomo. Her plan is working fine until Tomo realizes that someone is behind him. He turns around and Mitsuki ducks down to hide before he notices her. Unfortunately, Tomo still finds out that Mitsuki is hiding behind the sofa because he can still see her horns. Mitsuki gets flustered and tries to cover up by saying that she wasn't hiding or anything. Instead, she was just cleaning behind the sofa. 
She even has the disinfectant proof in her hand, seeing that Tomo is not buying her story. She tells him that he shouldn't get the wrong idea. She clarifies that she is not trying to make him pay attention to her. She then walks away with her embarrassment, while Tomo asks her if he should take a break, but Mitsuki is already stumped so she tells him that she doesn't want to break her cleaning streak. Sometime later, Mitsuki brings a cup of tea for Tomo and sits in front of him. She rests her arms and head on the table and asks Tomo if she could just watch him until he's done. Tomo's heart beats faster over his wife's cuteness. He works for another hour and after that, he gives Mitsuki the good time she deserves. A lot. Valentine's Day is here. The special 14th of February for the couples Mitsuki prepares special homemade chocolate for her sweet hubby and packs it in a heart-shaped box. She's really excited for him to be back so she could please him with these chocolates. Just then, her phone rings and it's a message from Tomo saying that he will again be late because of work. All of her excitement goes down the drain as she sulks while staring at the chocolate she made for him with such high hopes. She keeps waiting for him and finally, Tomo is back home. Just as she hears his voice, she picks up the box and rushes towards the door. She gets angry at him and reminds him how late he is and that he should say his last prayers now because she has no intention of sparing him this time. Telmo tells her that just when he wanted to leave, he was assigned a couple more tasks. This excuse is not working on Mitsuki, whose veins are now showing up. She states that he could have simply refused if he really wanted to get back home. Tomo finally notices the heart-shaped box in her hand and asks if it's chocolate. Mitsuki blushes and then proudly honors him with the love-filled sweet delights. Homemade Valentine's Day chocolate. Tomo gets really happy and thanks her with a gleaming face. Mitsuki is happy that her efforts didn't go fruitless. Later that night, Tomo amusingly shares that he never expected her to come running to him with chocolates in her hand. Mitsuki understands the hint and immediately walks towards the kitchen to get a knife for Tomo, because that's what he truly deserves. While watching TV, Tomo starts dozing off and ends up falling on her wife's shoulder. Okay, a little south to the shoulder, that can provide a much softer support. Mitsuki gets flustered as she tries to wake him up, but she's also enjoying the closeness. She loves Tomo's sleepy face as he looks really calm and cute to her. This sleeping face is also an opportunity for Mitsuki, who gathers her courage and goes in to try and kiss him. However, Tomo opens up his eyes at the wrong moment and scares the poor demon. Mitsuki gets so scared that the whole building hears a slap sound, and now poor Tomo, who was about to get kissed, now has a red cheek. Mitsuki tries to cover it up by saying that there is a mosquito on her face. She blames him for surprising her by waking up so suddenly. She honestly tells him that she wasn't trying to kiss him or anything, and it was really a mosquito. She then turns around and tells him to go to bed now. Tomo has gotten the gist of what Mitsuki was trying to do, and he finds it really cute. So he decides to reward her by raising himself to her face level, leaning in and giving her a surprise goodbye kiss on the lips. Mitsui walks up to Tomo, who is drying the dishes, and asks if he needs any help. Tomo refuses, saying that he will handle it and she should rest. Tomo even brings pancakes for her sometimes on his way back from the office. He would even make breakfast for her sometimes. She asks him if he needs barley tea. With breakfast and Tomo says yes. She pours the tea with a smile on her face while Tomo keeps staring at her face. He calls her name, and when she asks what is up, Tomo says to her, Thank you for marrying him. His pure smile and honest words fluster Mitsuki and she starts panicking. He's expressing his own feelings, but Tomo feels exactly the same. She then reciprocates his compliment with a smack on the back of his head, saying that he shouldn't say something like this with a straight faith. Baka Tomo. Tomo arrives home with a special gift for Mitsuki. He opens the box he brought for her and shows her the white day present. Mitsuki gets excited and picks a piece out. The nice fragrance coming from it is already swaying Mitsuki, and she could hardly keep it out of her mouth. She asks if it's chocolate or something like that, but Tomo tells her that it's actually soap. Mitsuki has no idea what soap is, so she looks at him with a blank face, asking what soap is and if it's something tasty. With a smile on his face, Tomo tells her to please not eat it. Mitsuki is now frowning and questioning why something this tasty looking exists when it can't be eaten. She thinks that humans are strange. Tomo wonders if it would have been better if he just brought some sweets. 
Keep in mind that Tomo is a hardworking guy who earns five figures. He is not a stupid guy. He tells Mitsuki the ulterior motive he had in mind while buying this. He shares that he thought he could use it on her in the bath. Mitsuki gets up right away so they can put his plan in motion. He with a blushing face. She picks up the cube soap and states that she would be thankful to Tomo if he could help her in the bath. She can't wait to take a bath with him, so she drags him to the bathroom right away. Tomo reminds her that it's already too late and they could wait till tomorrow, but Mitsuki believes that there is no tomorrow. There is only today. A while later, everything is cleaned for tomorrow. Back when Mitsuki used to be a kid, human kids would throw rocks at her to make her go back to the mountains. These kids are the reason protection was invented. These kids are the result of that one when the protection doesn't work. These boys are perfectly sized to be put inside a punching bag. Mitsuki would stand her ground with tears in her eyes while they would keep on trying to make her angry. Just then, a hand was extended to her with words of consolation. That hand belonged to Tomo, who asked her to be his friend. This was the moment Tomo and Mitsuki met each other. Since that day, they would often play together. They remained friends for years until one day. They both had to go their separate ways. Yumo informed her that he had to go to Tokyo because of his father's work. He didn't want to go, but there was nothing he could do. Mitsuki wanted to stop him, but all she could do was watch him sitting in the front seat of the cargo truck and leave. She ran after the truck, and as she realized that she couldn't catch up with it, she yelled at the top of her lungs that she liked Tomo and that he shouldn't leave her. Back to the present, Mitsuki wakes up with tears in her eyes while yelling Tomo's name. Thankfully, that time has passed and Tomo is right by her side, sleeping profoundly. Since it's only 2 a.m., she decides to head back to sleep. She grabs Tomo's blanket and sneaks inside. She hugs Tomo, resting her head on him, saying that she won't ever let him go. The next morning, Tomo wakes up with a slight neck pain, which he describes by saying that he feels he was strangled by a gorilla. Mitsuki is embarrassed because she can't reveal who the horned gorilla is. It's the 1st of April, so Mitsuki tells Tomo that in regard to the April Fool's Day, they should try to lie to each other. Tomo accepts the idea and after thinking for a couple of seconds, he lies to Mitsuki, saying that he hates everything about her. Mitsuki has gone all gloomy with a dark aura surrounding her. In her eyes, it becomes obvious that Mitsuki has lost all the will to live. Mitsuki is suddenly in the middle of darkness. Mitsuki is thinking about summoning a truck gun for her. Tomo sees that she is believing his lie, so he reminds her that he was only lying. What he said was only an April Fool's joke. Mitsuki sighs and confirms if he's telling the truth now and that he doesn't really hate her. It's Mitsuki's turn now, so she hugs Tomo and tells him that she really hates him, that she regrets marrying him and that everyday life with him is not fun and that she doesn't want to spend the rest of her life with him. Even though Tomo knows that she's only saying the opposite of everything that is true, my man takes a lot of emotional damage. His HP drains down his tears. In the end, April Fool's Night also ended up like every other night when they would convey their feelings to each other. Mitsuki is yelling at her TV screen because an intense fighting match is going on and being an MMA enthusiast. Mitsuki is having the best time of her life. The match ends, but the thrill in her is still there. She has learned all these new moves and now she needs to try them out on someone. Unfortunately, there's no one except for Tomo in her surroundings, so the poor guy is now battling for his life while his wife wants to discuss today's match. He tries to tell her to stop practicing her moves on him, but he's totally at her mercy. It's time for the next move, and instead of his neck, Tomo has to worry about his arm now. He keeps tapping on her leg, but Mitsuki isn't stopping and only telling him to do better. See guys, that's why a referee should be present at all times. Tomo breaks free, but his crazy wife is still following him and telling him that there's no running away from her. Tomo could even hear the sound of her blood grumbling and the evil intent is clear in her eyes. She's telling Tomo to stop resisting so she could do her special technique on him. Since he knows how innocent his wife is, a special technique isn't exactly what a husband would expect from his wife. Realizing that he needs to counterattack before he loses his life, Tomo displays his focus, commitment, and sheer will. He reminds her that he is the one who knocks. He grabs Mitsuki by her waist and pins her down. Now there's a silence in their house as Mitsuki lies on the floor while Tomo is on top of her. With a red, blushing face, 
Tomo averts her eyes, saying that it's cheating. Now wrestling is the last thing on both of their minds in this position. That night's pretend wrestling comes to an end with Tomo showing who is the tiny boss of this house. At 5 a.m. in the morning, Mitsuki wakes up while Tomo is still sleeping. She turns off her alarm while yawning and throws off her night suit. After changing into her regular clothes, she puts on her apron. It's another wonderful day for her and it's time to prepare a wonderful breakfast. She begins cooking and after a while, when she's almost done, she calls on Tomo to wake him up as it's already morning. Tomo, of course, wouldn't wake up with just a small announcement. So Mitsuki picks up the pan and spoon with an annoyed face and walks into the bedroom. She then wakes Tomo up in a professional and efficient way. Tomo changes into his work clothes and Mitsuki feeds him the breakfast like a child who is ready for school. She notices that Tomo's tie is messed up, so she sets it right. Surely, Tomo would mess up his tie every day now. Tomo then heads off to work. After he leaves, Mitsuki walks back in. Now that her morning mission of pampering her baby hubby is complete, she gets ready for the next mission that is watching TV until she gets bored. Just then, she notices that Tomo has forgotten his lunch. She picks up the lunch and starts running after him. She hopes that she could make it before Tomo's bus arrives. Using the Demon Dash skill, she was able to catch up. Momo and Mitsuki are walking in the park while cherishing the beautiful scenery of cherry blossoms. Out of nowhere, Tomo flusters Mitsuki by doing something unthinkable. The audacity of this man to enjoy the romantic scenery and daring to grab a woman's hand who happens to be his wife. Mitsuki pulls her hand away with a blushing face, asking what he's trying to do. He shouldn't have grabbed her hand like this in a public place. Tomo asks if she doesn't like it, but Mitsuki stutters that it's not that she doesn't like it. In that case, Tomo tells her that they should hold hands. He grabs her hand and they keep walking. Mitsuki is no longer thinking about the beautiful scenery. Instead, she's getting all nervous and happy. Tomo looks above and shares that back then, they used to grab each other's hands and go to different places. He shares that the year they spent together as friends was the best time of his childhood. He adds that even when he had to move to Tokyo and they had to spend time apart, he kept thinking about her. That is why being with her and holding her hand again is making him so happy. Just with a cheerful face, he suggests to Mitsuki that they should always walk together while holding hands from now on. Mitsuki tears up over this emotional confession and in her heart, she says to him that she will always, always follow him. Her strong love for him pours out from her hand and poor Tomo's hand gets crushed. Press F for Tomo. Tomo is now rubbing his hand and trying to hide his pain like a man, but his tears aren't working in his favor. He is in pain, but he can't help to admire how strong his wife is. Mitsuki again apologizes for her actions. Tomo sees the opportunity and ends up asking for compensation for this pain. Mitsuki wonders what he wants and then crosses her arms with fear that his husband wants to demand something that a man could only demand from his wife. Tomo tries to defend himself in front of his wife that he doesn't want something that he could only ask from his wife, who happens to be Mitsuki. However, Mitsuki is still suspicious of her husband that he would make her do something that she could only do for her husband, who happens to be Tomo. Although she shouldn't be worried since they were already holding hands, what more can he do now? He leads her to Kamogawa River, which has a special sitting spot for couples. Most of you wouldn't know about it because, as it's stated, is. Or couples. Tomo points at a free spot and suggests sitting there together. Mitsuki gets all flushed again and refuses right away. This request is exactly what she was afraid of. Tomo uses his innate cuteness to insist that they should sit here and she promised to fulfill his request. Mitsuki refuses, saying that she didn't promise any such thing. Tomo asks her if she's embarrassed. Mitsuki, who is clearly embarrassed and always speaks in Kansai dialect, suddenly starts using standard Kanto, saying that she isn't embarrassed. Tomo can sense the nervousness in her, and the formal speech only made it obvious. He now has a grin on his face. Mitsuki uses all her brain cells to recover from this damage, so she states that sitting on the ground will make their clothes dirty, and she doesn't want to wash them. She tries to convince him that she's against it because she doesn't want to add another thing to her housework. However, Tomo's expressions are now confusing her, and she wonders why he isn't giving up after such an amazing and thoughtful excuse. 
Tomo states that he already thought of this situation and brings out the picnic sheet he brought for this. Mitsuki was one step ahead, but my man was already at the finish line. Now they are both sitting at the dating spot and Tomo feels as if he's dreaming. He can't believe that he's actually sitting together with Mitsuki on the side of Kamogawa River like this. Mitsuki is still embarrassed. Tomo adds that they married right after they met each other again, so they didn't get to do all the dating stuff. They missed out on a lot of stuff, but now it feels like the opposite. They could still be all lovey-dovey with each other like any normal couple. Mitsuki's heart is beating faster now as she looks into Tomo's eyes. Just then, Tomo asks if he could kiss her and Mitsuki replies that she's going to hit this idea out of him. Just then, they see a ball coming their way so Mitsuki gets up and picks up the ball. She sees a little girl chasing after her ball but with a smile on her face. Mitsuki cheerfully returns the ball to little girl. After thanking her wani san she notices Mitsuki's horns. She is surprised and amazed to see how beautiful they look on Mitsuki. Mitsuki then tells her to go on because her mother is waiting for her. While the girl is running back to her mom, Mitsuki tells her to be careful not to fall. The little girl gets back to her mama and tells her that the nice one Nisan has horns on her head. Mama has no clue what her cute daughter is saying because kids are idiots. Tomo notices how nice Mitsuki was to the kid and how that kid brought a smile to Mitsuki's face, so he tells her that one day, they both might also have a cute daughter like her. He is looking forward to that day when they would make a happy family. Mitsuki is now picturing their happy family with a cute little demon with little little horns saying I love you to her mom. Just the thought of having a child with Tomo has Mitsuki drooling and she knows that it will make her super happy. However, she can't let her hubby know that she wants a child too because she's a tsunder. So she tells him that if he really wants a child, he should stop coming home late from work. He needs to come on time for the process to begin. Tomo tells her that he will try his best. Mitsuki and Tomo are on another one of their trips, so Mitsuki suggests that since they are visiting Shijou, they should go to the place that she likes a lot. The place with her favorite dish, with millions of green onions on it. Mitsuki can't help but admire the beauty of this delicious food while Tomo points out that the amount of onions is far beyond normal. But that's exactly what Mitsuki likes. As she takes a bite, she tells him that people in Kyoto are half green onion. Just after the first bite, Mitsuki is already defeated by the spices and now she's in dire need of water to survive. Tomo hands her the water bottle and wonders why she has to eat so fast when she knows she can't handle spicy food. They are on their way back and Mitsuki shares that she really enjoyed the day. Tomo promises that they will come here again the next time he gets a break. And with a cheeky face, Mitsuki says that she wonders when a miracle like that will happen again. While sitting on the train on their way back home, both end up sleeping throughout the journey while resting their heads with each other and having satisfied smiles on their faces. It's the 7th of July now and Tomo and Mitsuki are here in front of the Tanzaku. The lady asks them if they would like to write their wishes to hang it. Tomo is really excited to do so, but Mitsuki passes on the offer. Tomo makes his irresistible kawaii face to talk his wife into agreeing to his demand. Tomo has cracked the code and is now using wife's trick back on her. Mitsuki takes a lot of damage from this kawaii face, but she still tries to stand her ground, saying that she still won't do it. Ultimately, Tomo's cuteness wins her over, and now they are both writing down their wishes. After Tomo is done with his wish, he asks Mitsuki about what she's writing, but Mitsuki decides to settle the debt from earlier. She immediately hands her card to the lady and prohibits her from showing it to her baka husband. There's nothing Tomo can do about it, so he gives up and hands over his card to the lady as well. They walk back with Tomo holding his wife's arm and Mitsuki getting embarrassed at her husband's clingy act in public. Meanwhile, the nice lady is staring at their wish cards that both say the same thing. Mitsuki wants to stay forever with Tomo and Tomo wants to stay forever with Mitsuki. Tomo's feeling depressed after a huge mistake at work and sitting all worried and gloomy. Mitsuki approaches him and asks if he's okay because he looks really sad. Tomo doesn't want to bore her with his work problems, so he tells her that everything is fine, but Mitsuki can clearly see that everything is not fine. She uses all two of her brain cells to think if there's anything she could do to make Tomo lively again. Just then, an idea pops up in her mind. 
She calls Timo's name and then out of nowhere, she grabs him and hugs him tightly. Due to the height difference, the hug is even better for Tomo who is cramped right now, but in a good way. She pats his head and assures him that everything is going to be all right. Mitsuki remembers that whenever she would come home crying, her mother would always hug her dearly and tell her nice things to cheer her up. Tomo's eyes fill up with tears over how nice his wife is. He thanks Mitsuki and tells her that he's already feeling a bit better. Mitsuki also gets happy and tells him that he can talk to her whenever he wants to and she will always console him whenever he wants. With a smile on his face, Tomo thanks her and after a brief pause, he tells Mitsuki that he's really enjoying the soft pillows and they are really calming him. Not just his head, but Tomo's hands are also receiving the consolation now. Tomo is abiding by the famous saying that when life gives you opportunity, grab it with both hands. Mitsuki couldn't handle the unexpected move, so she gets really embarrassed and starts yelling at her husband for trying to extend the limits of consolation. Poor guy gets slapped for pushing things beyond a handshake with his wife. Ultimately, the slaps get the credit for cheering Tomo up. Tomo heads off to work and after seeing him off, Mitsuki raises her sleeves to do her household demon stuff. Since her husband is working really hard for both of them, she believes that she shouldn't laze around and fall behind. While thinking about how her husband deserves to sleep on a fluffy futon after he gets home, she tidies his bed. She brings out the spray and makes the bathroom all shiny and sparkly because Tomo loves using the bathtub. She's taking a lunch break now with her homemade sandwich and while doing so, she checks her phone to send a lovely and romantic message to the love of her life, asking him nicely if he would come home early tonight. She thinks about how she wants to hug him as soon as he gets back home. She writes a romantic message with a romantic reference to the sea, asking if he will be home on time tonight. Tomo doesn't know how to respond to such a wholesome message. Mitsuki then heads off to the convenience store to buy groceries. She wants to make Tomo's favorite curry tonight. She gets back home and starts cooking for him while getting excited over how he will be home soon. She's done with the dinner and now she's sitting on the sofa hugging a pillow and being sad over how Tomo is late again today. Just then, she hears the sound of the door opening. She gets all happy again that Tomo is finally home after their long day apart. She starts running towards the door to greet her husband nicely until she realizes that she forgot the kitchen knife, so she quickly heads to the kitchen to pick it up. She ambushes Tomo at the door and yells at him for coming home late again. Tomo tries to apologize again, but Mitsuki reminds him about the lovely message she sent earlier and how yesterday he promised that he won't be late again. Tomo is now trying to run to save his life. It's Sunday now and Sunday means Tomo's holiday, so Mitsuki should be holding her pan and spoon to perform the wake-up concert. However, Mitsuki is far angrier today than the rest of Sundays because Tomo has just told her something that he never should have said to her. He can't stay home because he has plans with his colleagues. He tries to apologize to Mitsuki while struggling to breathe, but Mitsuki is only telling him to stop apologizing and don't call the cops on her after she gives him what he deserves. At this point, she's not even hiding the scary plans she has for Tomo's departure from not the home but the world. She then frees him, turns around, and tells him that she doesn't care anymore. Whether it's work or golf, Tomo is free to do whatever he wants and she won't bother or care at all from now on. Tomo doesn't want to leave his wife angry, especially when he knows that she only wants to spend more time with him and he's the one at fault. So he extends his hands to her hair and pulls her closer. Tomo gives her something else, something romantic to think about for the rest of the day. And Mitsuki might be angry and she might be strong because she's a demon, but she's not strong enough to back off from what Tomo is doing. Her heart beats faster and the kiss drains away her anger. As he is about to leave, he nervously asks her if they can continue from here when he gets back home. Mitsuki has no recollection of ever being angry with him now, so she sees him off with a brighter smile than other days and wishes him good luck for the day. When Tomo got back that night, they did pick up from where they left off. Tomo is literally a demon slayer with that smoothness and riz. Tomo and Mitsuki are enjoying the beautiful fireworks from their balcony. Mitsuki loves the sparkly sky while Tomo, who is already on the max riz level, 
tells Mitsuki that compared to the beautiful fireworks, Mitsuki is a hundred times more beautiful. Once again, she's all embarrassed and flushed. My guy doesn't let her catch a breath. The summer's heat is bothering Mitsuki and she wants to feel better. So she opens the fridge to look for some drinks to cool off. Just then, she finds the bottle with a strange name slip on it. Now Mitsuki feels challenged and she wants to see if this can live up to its name. She wants to show this can its real place. Tamo gets back from work and puts a wet cloth on Mitsuki's forehead who is now having a severe fever. Tomo wonders why she drank that can when she knows she's not good with alcohol. That's why he labeled it like that. Tomo is really enjoying the hamburger steak while Mitsuki is just staring at him. Instead of eating herself, she seems to be indulging in some serious thoughts. She then calls up Tomo and tells him what she noticed. She states that recently, Tomo seems to be putting on some weight. Tomo tries to deny it, saying that she's only misunderstanding and maybe it's his shirt that is making him look fat. However, Mitsuki is sure that Tomo looks healthier than before, so she tries to convince him to step on the weighing scale to see if she's right. Tomo agrees and turns out that Mitsuki is right and Tomo has gained 6 kilograms, which means 13.2 pounds in freedom units. Tomo tries to laugh it off and play it cool. Mitsuki then decides that she will not be cooking for him anymore until he maintains his diet and focuses on his fitness. Tomo doesn't want to compromise on his food, and he knows that he could turn the situation around, so all he's asking for is a chance to talk. Mitsuki agrees to listen to him, and Tomo states that he only gained weight and started eating too much because of how delicious Mitsuki's cooking is. It's because he feels like he can't get enough of her tasty meals. He adds that he knows she does all this housework for his sake, and she is still trying her hardest to learn how to cook more meals. Once again, the little guy with his unlimited riz turns the tables, and now Mitsuki feels so happy that her husband acknowledges her efforts and really cares about her. She confesses that she might be making a bit too much, so that much is her fault. Tomo sighs as he knows he won the battle, however. Mitsuki isn't done yet. She brings out her katana-like umbrella and shares that she wants to correct her mistake and repent for the sin of cooking too much. Tomo could see where things are going so, he tries to make a run for it, but his shirt is already in her grip now. She leads Tomo to the park so he can try running now and for his diet. She will personally oversee the plan. Poor Tomo, who was scared for his life, ended up running a hundred laps in the park. Mitsuki convinces Tomo, who is always busy with his work, to go out with her and now here they are in front of so many food stalls. Mitsuki in her beautiful kimono is all excited to try all the tasty foods. She grabs Tomo's hand so the fun can begin. They walk around and play different games and enjoy different food. All this time, Tomo's eyes were glued on Mitsuki. He thanks her for bringing him here to today's summer festival as he needed some fun time like this. Mitsuki tries to hide her blushing face behind the cotton candy, and Tomo continues that after watching her have so much fun, all the stress from his work has gone away. Moreover, he tells her that it's been a while since he saw her in kimono. It reminds him of their childhood days, when he would love it, whenever Mitsuki dressed in a kimono. Mitsuki blushes and struggles to find an appropriate response to all these compliments and ends up saying the same as always, that he shouldn't say such embarrassing stuff. However, she then nervously tells Tomo that if he really likes to see her in kimono, she will wear it whenever he wants her to. Now they are both blushing and staring at each other's faces until Mitsuki can't handle it anymore, so with a deep breath, she suggests that she should go and buy some ramen now. Tomo, whose heart is also beating really fast after this conversation, agrees to do so. After that, they continue to enjoy their summer festival date. Mitsuki is all happy today and is delightfully singing about her delicate demon clothes. The lyrics may be questionable, but beyond these questionable lyrics that claim a warranty of five years lies Mitsuki's genuine happiness. The reason she's singing about these today is because today is Tomo's payday. With his salary, Mitsuki knows that her beloved Tomo will buy her lots of new clothes, and that's what makes her so happy. Even the next day, she's still very happy and singing about her new delicate yet strong clothes, and Tomo is enjoying such a wholesome morning. He wishes for every morning to be like this, and he has no regrets about spending his hard-earned money well. Now that the shopping effect has worn off, Mitsuki is super angry at something. 
Tomo could sense the angry aura around her and the fire in her eyes. After thinking for a couple of minutes and making sure he didn't do anything wrong, he asks her if something bad happened that ruined her mood. Mitsuki seems to be really irritated by something and she doesn't want to share it right now, so she tells Tomo to leave it alone since it is her personal problem. Just then, Rizlord Tomo gets an idea. He hugs Mitsuki from behind and starts rubbing. Nope, not that kind of story. Starts rubbing her sensitive horns, telling her that everything is going to be all right. Mitsuki is surprised at the sudden approach, so she tries to push him away, but Tomo isn't going anywhere until his cute wife doesn't forget about her problem. After a couple of scrubs, Mitsuki is all calmed down now and she ends up sleeping in Tomo's lap with a smile on her face. Tomo is happy and proud of himself for managing to fix her mood. Sometimes stroking helps, especially if you have a demon wife who has sensitive horns. Let's have a look at this couple from Tomo's point of view. He is man enough to face reality and acknowledge that he's genuinely scared of his demon wife, especially when she's angry at him for coming home late. What really scares Tomo is the menacing aura pouring out of her and the fact that she immediately draws out a knife not just a knife, a big knife. Being a man, Tomo acknowledges that apart from the knife, Mitsuki is also big in many other ways and sometimes she gets angrier when he gets distracted and fails to maintain eye contact. Another thing about Mitsuki is that she can't hold back her power. Tomo steps into the bathtub and he notices that Mitsuki is also following him while wearing a towel. Yup, just a towel. She offers to wash his back and Tomo tries to act tough at first, but Mitsuki tells him that he doesn't have to act all shy. Not after they went as far as holding hands and stroking horns. But the reason Taino tries to pass on this offer is because Mitsuki cannot hold back her power. His back ends up all red and Mitsuki feels bad afterwards. She asks him if it hurts, but Tomo spares her the pain by saying that it's fine now that she's applying the whatever it is. Moreover, Mitsuki selfishly enters his futon. That alone is a very cute act, and Tomo really likes it until she kicks him out of his own futon and Tomo has to fight the cold all night. Mitsuki always wakes up earlier than him to make breakfast and lunchbox for him. Tomo would then head off to work. Before he leaves, Mitsuki would always come to the front door to see him off with some kind and romantic words like you forgot your bag or if you come late again, I'll eat you. That's Mitsuki's way of telling him that she can't wait to see him again. Tomo understands what she really means, so with a smirk on his face. Tomo often surprises her with a peck on her cheek. Tomo is truly scared of his demon wife. Tomo is in the middle of a forest, getting a confession from a gorilla. With a blushing face and fast heartbeat, Mr. Gorilla confesses its love for Tomo in Kansai dialect. Tomo is a man of honor, a loyal man, so he gently turns down the proposal by saying that he has another person he loves. However, the gorilla tries to overwhelm him and tries to hug him. Tomo is feeling suffocated by its strong arms and is calling out Mitsuki to help him. Turns out Tomo is having a nightmare and instead of gorilla, it's Mitsuki and her strong arms that are making it difficult for him to breathe. Mitsuki has again sneaked into his futon. That morning, Tomo wakes up with neck pain. And another day and another overtime for Tomo. He still hasn't come home yet and it's already half past midnight. His wife is tightly holding the love pillow and waiting for him with tears in her eyes. Finally, the corporate slave is back home. Mitsuki gets excited that her husband is finally back and using Demon Dash. She runs towards the main door to greet Tomo, who seems to be working for Mappa Studios, given how much overtime he has been doing. Mitsuki was worried a lot because he has never been this late before and she is so relieved that he's finally back. However, she can't express her true feelings so she, as usual, points her knife at him, asking if he knows what time it is right now. She asks him if he hates her or something and is trying to use his job to distance himself from her, but Tomo tries to justify that it isn't like that. Deep down, Mitsuki is not angry about overtime, but she feels lonely without him. She turns around and tells him that she hates him. Tomo gets sad and right after saying these words, Mitsuki realizes that she ended up saying something mean to him again. However, Tomo knows that he's at fault, so he hugs Mitsuki from behind, saying that he loves her a lot and apologizes for making her worry all the time. In an angry voice, Mitsuki asks him if he thinks a hug from behind is enough for her to forgive him. If he thinks so, she clarifies that he couldn't be more wrong. She's a demon after all. Her mouth is saying these words but in her heart. 
she has already melted down over this hug and has forgiven him already. Hearing that he loves her a lot, she wants to say that she loves him from the bottom of her heart too. She ends up telling him to be a man and put more strength in the hug. She feels embarrassed but does not regret saying it to him. Kamo comes back home and is greeted by a huge fluffy ghost. The ghost demands the famous trick-or-treat. If Tomo gives candies to this huge yet cute ghost, he will be spared. Otherwise, the ghost will play pranks on him. Tomo is delighted to see the cute ghost, especially with the ghost's horns popping up from her costume. The ghost politely requests chocolates or candies again, but Tomo apologizes saying that he didn't bring any candies. The ghost seems to be prepared for this situation and ends up grabbing and devouring Tomo. Inside the ghost's costume is Tomo's beautiful wife ready to play some pranks on Tomo. Tomo failed to bring candies, but Mitsuki here is nothing less than a treat given how good her real costume is. Tomo is surely surprised at his wife's bold advance, but there's nothing he could do in this situation other than accept his fate and thank God. Some snuggling begins inside the ghost costume and they both pranked each other a lot that night. It's 6 p.m. on the clock and Tomo realizes that it's time for him to go out. Mitsuki has no idea where he's supposed to go, so she asks him and Tomo reminds her about the company's drinking party he told her about. Mitsuki asks if it will be okay for him to not go after all. It's just a party, but Tomo tells her that he can't do that. He has to show up. Since he is that persistent, Mitsuki raises her legs and puts them both on Mitsuki's lap. She has got him now and this way, Tomo can't go to the party, no matter how hard he tries. Mitsuki, with her victorious smile, winks at Tomo while he struggles to move her legs away. Tomo knows that he can't match her demon strength, so he's requesting Mitsuki to move her legs, but Mitsuki is enjoying the supremacy at this moment. Mitsuki tells him that she can't hear him over all the physical strength. Mitsuki is proud of her genius plan of keeping her husband to herself so they can spend more time together. Even though he's struggling, Tumo still finds it cute that his wife wants him to stay by her side all the time. Seeing this romantic attempt, Tumo decides least, that he should cancel his plans. He asks Mitsuki if he should tell them that he can't make it. Mitsuki is surprised because she didn't expect Tomo to agree to stay with her this quickly. Tomo adds that if she doesn't want him to go, he can stay. However, Mitsuki now feels bad and doesn't want him to end up in any trouble because of her, so she tells him that she is only joking and that if he wants to go, he can. Tomo takes up on her offer and uses his trump card to escape. He starts tickling her and now Mitsuki is begging him to just leave. Tomo is at his office sitting at his desk and thinking about something. He looks bothered and takes a big sigh. His co-worker notices and asks Tomo if something is troubling him. This charming guy is Tomo's senior, Mewtwo Takeshi. Muto senpai rarely sees Tomo sad like this, so he asks if there's something wrong and Tomo tells him that everything is all right. Since it's noon already, Mewtwo senpai tells him to tag along for lunch, his treat, but Tomo shares that he already brought his own lunch. Mewtwo senpai then tells him that in that case, he will grab some sandwiches from the convenience store and they could eat together. While sitting in the park, Mewtwo talks about how he likes the lettuce sandwiches the most because they have a subtle taste, even though they are only from the convenience store. Now then, Mewtwo senpai comes to the real topic and asks again about what's bothering Tomo. He tells him that he will feel better if he talks it out. Tomo appreciates the concern and reveals that he had a huge fight with his wife last night. Mitsuki got really angry when Tomo was again late from work and she started crying. She couldn't handle being lonely all the time any longer, so she lashed out at him. They didn't even look at each other's faces this morning. They rarely have fights like this, so it's bothering Tomo. Even the tears are showing up in Tomo's eyes, saying that he doesn't want Mitsuki to hate him. Mewtwo states that he doesn't think Mitsuki hates Tomo because if she did, she wouldn't have prepared a lunchbox for him. She goes through all the trouble to make her lunch, so Mewtwo insists that he should eat it before the lunch break is over. Tomo opens up the lunchbox and on his cute cat-shaped omelet, Mitsuki wrote a sari with ketchup. Mewtwo is right, Mitsuki still loves Tomo a lot and then tells him that he's staying at the office till late at night. So Tomo should go home early and make up with Mitsuki. Thanks to Mewtwo senpai, Tomo and Mitsuki made peace. 
W. Senpai, at the office Tomo is approached by Mutu Senpai who asks him if he's still staying here because it's already past office hours. Tomo says that he still has some work, left so Mewtwo Senpai tells him that he appreciates him being diligent. However, he should at least go home early tonight because it's Christmas Eve and his wife must be waiting for him. Tomo appreciates the compliment and knows that Mewtwo Senpai is right, but he shows him the stack of documents saying that the chief told him to organize all these documents by tomorrow morning. He can't leave until he does so. Mewtwo Senpai snatches all the documents from his hand and tells him not to worry about it. He tells him that he will handle all these documents whereas he should go home to his wife. Tomo tries to resist but Mewtwo Senpai who is twice the size of Tomo pushes him out of the office. Now that Tomo is gone, Mewtwo looks at the documents while thinking about how the chief keeps giving weird jobs that he should be doing himself to employees like Tomo. Just then, Tomo calls Mewtwo Senpai to rise and, and thanks him a lot for covering up for him. He picks up his bag and tells Mewtwo Senpai that he will be on his way now. Senpai smiles with no regret for taking over the responsibility from him and reminds him to buy some cake on his way back. That would make his wife even happier. By the time Mewtwo is done with organizing all those documents, it's already snowing outside. It's rare to see snowing in Tokyo and no wonder it's getting cold. He decides to buy some cake as well before heading back home for his family. Meanwhile, Mitsuki and Tomo are enjoying their Christmas Eve and Mitsuki is so happy that she's even taking a picture of cake for memory. Mewtwo's daughter also greets him with excitement as he steps into the house, and the Best Wingman Award goes to Mewtwo Senpai. On her way back home, Mitsuki finds a stall selling baked sweet potatoes, and she can't resist the urge, so she ends up buying them. She's so happy that stalls like these are still around, and she can't wait to get back home and enjoy the meal. Even the smell is driving her crazy. She quickly demon dashes back home, and without even setting her slippers straight, she rushes straight to the kitchen because she wants to eat the potatoes right away, and she doesn't have OCD. She digs into the meal, and just a single bite has already sent her on cloud nine. She can't get enough of this yummy taste. Even her little angels are having a blast. She keeps munching on the sweet, delicious potato and finishes it instantly. Considering her fitness and diet schedule, she decides that one is enough for the day until she notices that there are still three of them left. One cheat day doesn't count, so she generously changes her plan to leave one for Tumo and eat the rest of the two. Just the sight of them has her drooling. She eats another one and then another one, and when there's only one left for Tomo, she uses all her willpower to refrain from eating his share. However, she couldn't handle herself for long enough and settles for a bite that would keep her off. Ultimately, she ends up eating all of them. Later that night, Tomo comes back home and shows Mitsuki the souvenir he bought for her. It's Mitsuki's favorite Mont Blanc cake. Tomo offers it to her, but Mitsuki refuses since she's already stuffed with four potatoes. Tomo is surprised that she doesn't want any while Mitsuki has tears in her eyes, and she finds out that karma is real. Not being able to eat her favorite Mont Blanc cake is the divine punishment for not leaving any potato for Tomo. Tomo comes back home from work and hears Mitsuki running towards the door, as always. However, Mitsuki greets her like she has been waiting for him all this time, which is true every day, but this clear demonstration of her love never happened before. She jumps at Tomo for a hug and they end up falling on the floor. Tomo realizes that something is wrong. This isn't his Mitsuki. This is an imposter. He asks her, where's the kitchen knife? Because he is not used to being greeted without the knife. With a smile on her face, Mitsuki asks why she would need a knife for her husband, whom she loves a lot. Tomo is now shocked. He isn't prepared for this situation. He never thought about what to do when Mitsuki breaks down. Mitsuki is still hugging Tomo and continuously telling him that she loves him a lot. Someone who's even embarrassed at holding hands is continuously hugging him and telling him that she loves him a lot. If that wasn't enough, she leans in and kisses Tomo on the lips. With all the confusion, Tomo is unable to enjoy and is wondering where his Mitsuki has gone. He breaks contact and Mitsuki extends her arms telling him to come closer so she can further demonstrate her love for him. However, Tomo has found out the reason behind this. He smells alcohol, so he looks at the table and sees four empty beer cans. Turns out, 
all this love is due to alcohol. She is too drunk to maintain her tsundere character right now. Still a win for Tomo, though. Later that night, Mitsuki gets a severe headache and Tomo reminds her that this is exactly why she shouldn't be going near alcohol. Mitsuki now regrets drinking. After some time, Mitsuki is finally able to sleep and after making sure that she is sleeping, Tomo whispers her name and then leans in to give her a kiss. He tells her that next time, they will take our time. My guy likes the foreplay. He likes to work for it. Mitsuki is enjoying her plastic wrapped cookies that look like Durex or something and watching a romantic movie. She's a little annoyed at how the couple in the movie is bragging about their love life. Being someone who greets her husband with a knife, Mitsuki is obviously jealous at hearing the girl in the movie say to her husband that they have tried many new things together now that they are newlyweds. Hearing this makes Mitsuki angst about how Tomo and her are also newlyweds. She wonders if she should try something like that with Tomo as well. Tomo comes back home late again as usual. He hears Mitsuki rushing towards the door and he knows that he's going to get an earful right now. Surprisingly, Mitsuki greets him normally and asks him like a role model wife if he would like dinner first or his bath first. She's obviously embarrassed at acting this nice, but it's obvious that she's trying her best. However, her first attempt at acting like a role model wife doesn't turn out to be good because Tomo is terrified. He falls on the ground asking if she's all right or if she bumped her head or something. More importantly, he wonders where her knife is. Mitsuki gets angry at first, but then calms herself down and tells him, with a blushing face, that since they are both newlywed yet they have never done anything fitting of a newlywed couple, she thought she should at least change the way she addresses him. She adds a special san after his name to sound cuter while averting her eyes with embarrassment. Unfortunately, her precious Tomoyuki-san couldn't hold his laughter. Seeing him burst out in laughter, Mitsuki gets angry again and starts yelling at this pocket-sized corporate slave husband of hers. Now that she's yelling, Tomo is glad that she's back to normal. He tells her that he always loves the usual Mitsuki, the way she is. He likes how she talks to him and everything about her so she shouldn't force herself to change. Riz Lord Tomo strikes again. Mitsuki's heart skips a beat at hearing that Tomo loves her for who she is. She thanks her and immediately runs off to the kitchen to get her knife for Tomo since he admitted that he likes her knife. Now, Tomo is trying to stop the crazy demon saying that the knife is not a necessity. Mitsuki and Tomo are sitting on the sofa in front of the TV. Mitsuki is enjoying a nice oni oni cup of coffee while Tomo is staring at her face. He then calls her name and out of nowhere tells her that he loves her a lot. She gets surprised and ends up spilling some of the coffee. At this point, he really likes to tease her wife. The coffee got into her trachea, and she's coughing while speaking gibberish and asking why he's saying that all of a sudden. Tomo apologizes for startling her like that, although it's clear at this point that he doesn't feel sorry. He tells her that she's just too cute and she always thinks of him, so he genuinely thinks that she's an amazing wife. He can't help saying stuff like that. They naturally slip out of his mouth. He blames Mitsuki for being so pretty and amazing that he can't not praise her all the time. Mitsuki is blushing and wondering if her husband has smoked something. Still, it makes her really happy, and she could hardly control her blushing. Meanwhile, Mr. I love my wife a lot is on a roll. He is not stopping. He tells her that he loves her from the bottom of his heart and also, he loves her smooth horns a lot. Mitsuki is amazed at how someone can say such embarrassing stuff without hesitation. That's because Lil Chipmunk here means everything he is saying. She realizes that she also wants to express her honest feelings at times like this. She can't always yell at him or act embarrassed. Moreover, she wants to tell such things to him. She wants to be able to express her real feelings for him. She musters all her courage while clenching her shirt. She hesitantly calls Tomo's name and as she is about to express her feelings, her heart starts beating faster and faster. She manages to say a couple more words that she also. Before she can continue, her courage drains to zero and she can't handle it anymore, so she ends up smacking the cushion onto Mo's face telling him to forget whatever she was trying to say. As always, she tells Tomo that she loves her a lot. As always, the confession didn't come out of her mouth and remained in her heart. 
The TV lounge is filled with baby toys all over the floor and table while Mitsuki is cooking in the kitchen. With a smile on her face, she chops the vegetable. Just then, she is interrupted by a little demon girl who calls her mama. Mitsuki turns around and asks her daughter what she wants. This cute little demon girl with a fluffy teddy in her arms is called Miyuki, who wants to play house with her mama. She tells Mitsuki that she will be mama and this bear will be papa. Mitsuki laughs and asks why papa is a bear and Miyuki responds that it's because papa is cute and small. Poor Tomo takes some emotional damage. Mitsuki asks if she's gonna play as the child, but Miyuki tells her that Mama Mitsuki will be the bear. She was laughing when the bear was Tomo, but guess who's laughing now? She thinks that the roles make no sense now. The house game begins and right away, Miyuki starts making out with the bear because she's Mama and the bear is Papa and since they both are all lovey-dovey all the time, Miyuki is simply copying them and saying I love you to each other. Mitsuki is getting seriously embarrassed and she tries to cover up by saying that they never say anything like that to each other. However, Miyuki is a smart girl, so she tells them that they say it all the time and that Mitsuki is supposed to be a bear who can't talk, so she better shush. Mitsuki looks at the clock and it's 8 p.m. so Tomo should be coming home any minute now. Just then, they hear the creaking sound of the door opening. Both the pretty ladies greet the most important man in their lives. Miyuki steals Mitsuki's chance and hugs Tomo, saying that she loves him. Tomo is happy to hear it from his daughter, while Mitsuki, who knows the backstory, is getting embarrassed and telling Miyuki to stop copying her mama. Tomo gets back home for real now, and Mitsuki wakes up from this amazing family dream. She slept on the table while waiting for Tomo and ended up having the best dream of her life. Tomo asks her what kind of dream she was having because she had a really happy face while she was sleeping. He almost didn't want to interrupt her. Mitsuki gets flustered and tries to find the right way to explain what she was dreaming about. Instead of explaining all that, she cuts right to the chase and asks Tomo if he wants to do it tonight. We might be able to see Miyuki soon, for real. Tomo and his co-workers are enjoying a dinner party at the company's expense, and while everyone is chatting, Tomo is sitting quietly with a work smile on his face with a glass of iced tea in his hand. Just then, Chief Watanabe slams his glass of beer on the table and yells at Tomo for sticking with the tea. He tells him that he should drink beer and nothing else. This Chief Watanabe with his curly noodle hair is the one who should run for his life before Mitsuki comes for him with her knife. Chief calls the waiter and tells him to bring a glass of Oolong High for Tomo, and then stares at Tomo to ask him if he's going to turn down his chief. Being put in a spot like that, Tomo can't do anything other than agree to his chief's order. Meanwhile, our wingman Mewtwo Senpai gets up from the table to go to the washroom. Instead, Mewtwo Senpai runs into the waiter, who is supposed to bring the Oolong High and makes a small change in the order. Chief Wadajoke is still acting all rude with the newbies because he's super drunk at this point. The waiter brings the glass of along high for Tomo and puts it in front of him. Chief persuades Tomo to drink it all, and since he doesn't want to disappoint the chief, he picks up the glass and tries to pour it all down in a single sip. However, just as he takes a sip, he realizes something. Tomo easily finishes the whole glass and the chief pats his shoulder and praises him for being a gentleman. Meanwhile, Mr. Mastermind Senpai Mewtwo is enjoying his drink in the back with a mission complete faith. Afterward, they leave the restaurant after everyone is either drunk or full. As they are walking back, Tomo asks Mewtwo Senpai if he was the one who replaced his oolong high with oolong tea earlier. Instead of saying yes and taking credit, our humble champ apologizes to Tomo for not being able to do more to rescue him from that crazy chief. He knows that Chief can be a handful especially when he's in a bad mood and apologizes that Tomo had to get caught up with his lame, idiotic behavior. He then looks at Tomo and tells him that if, someday, he gets promoted above him, he promises to change their company for the better. Tomo is deeply impressed by Mewtwo Senpai's determination, and the level of respect he has for him rose to maximum. He hugs Mewtwo Senpai and promises to follow him for the rest of his life. Mewtwo Senpai is trying to push this cockroach away, saying that he doesn't like men hugging him. In his mind, Mewtwo Senpai is asking Tomo why is he gay. Tomo is at his office and taking a break from work to reply to the text from his beloved wife. Mitsuki asked him if he's coming home early today, and Tomo replies that he would try to come home as fast as possible. 
He tries to move his fingers as fast as possible so he can finish all the tasks quickly and get back home early. However, he could already see that he won't be able to finish it anytime soon. It's already late at night and while traveling back home, Tomo is sad that he ended up working overtime again today. He wants to see Mitsuki right away, but he's also scared to face her. Tomo arrives back home and nervously announces himself. He hears the rumbling and it's not Eren but Mitsuki and instead of 80 population, it's only Tomo whose fate is about to be sealed. She is super angry at him and asks him if he realizes how long he was out working. The nerves on her face are more extreme and combined with the sharp knife being pointed at Tomo, he knows that he is done. The knife keeps getting closer and closer to Tomo's face, and while heavily sweating and nearly wetting himself, Tomo tells her that the knife is now entering the dangerous area. Looking straight into his eyes, Mitsuki reveals that she has been sharpening it while waiting for him so the Tomo mints can be done cleanly. She turns around in anger and suggests Tomo marry his job if he loves spending time with work more than her. Before Tomo could say anything, Mitsuki continues saying that she's sure he had forgotten about her at the office and was enjoying the time without her. At this point, Mitsuki realizes that she's going too far now, but in the heat of the moment, she started taking bad and now she can't stop herself. However, Tomo states that she is wrong. He was silent up till now, but he won't stand this accusation. He claims that he has never forgotten about her, not even for a second. He claims that even while working, he can't stop thinking about her. Judging by his expressions, it's obvious that Tomo isn't lying so Mitsuki is now blushing while thinking about how much her husband loves her. It's Loki making her really happy. She then asks him if that is so, why does he come home so late? She then turns around while humming and calls him inside for dinner. She's all happy now and Tomo wonders why she can't be honest about her feelings. Her words are always defied by her cute expressions. With that, Tomo and Mitsuki make up again and postpone the fight until tomorrow when Tomo will, obviously, be late again.